ashtrays full. That's why they parked it. Headed up to eastern Nebraska today to look at a collection of, I think, around 150 old cars and trucks. The guy was mainly a tractor collector, but he had a lot of vehicles too, and just was a big graveyard of old vehicles that laid in the woods. Probably wasn't a woods when he parked them there, but after the decades, the trees just grew up. They sat there 40, 50 years. There were some sheds on the property also, and so some of these have been parked indoors for a lot of decades as well. There's a couple Edsels in there. Thunderbird. Some old 1930s coupe, and just anything that he was into and liked, he dragged it home. Old motorcycles, you name it, it's there. Now, my understanding is they've been pulling all these out and getting them rode up, so we're going to stop and take a look. <laughs> come here. Hey, come here. So I get out here, and the first thing, I'm greeted by a chocolate lab carrying a transmission clutch disc. Junkyard dog and certified member of the Good Boys Guild. So all of this, where we're standing, the open field, used to look like that. Solid woods, full of cars. Some of them parked, bumper to door. They pulled them all out, cut the trees. They actually bought a telehandler just for this job. So there's stuff of all kinds and varieties out here. Got the 48 through 50 Ford truck. Looks like an F6. That was about the biggest tonnage they made of them. This old army truck. Believe that's General Motors based. I am not the truck expert. All oh, the plates on the dash. This thing was originally military green and then it was repainted orange after it was sold into civilian service, which pretty common on these trucks. It's got the federal property sticker from the forestry service. Uh, manufactured 53, wow, by Studebaker, okay. So this is a Studebaker, 21,000 miles. I don't think there's an hour meter. Kind of a cool plate there. Instructions for fording water. That's kind of cool. So this thing, ah, wow, Studebaker, 53. You got your spare tire mount and your jerry can rack. Right in the heart of Korean War time. Right at the end of Korean War time. <laughs> So this has a flatbed, could have been a dump bed that they cut the sides off with that big ducktail up top like that. A couple Corvair convertibles. My understanding was some of these better ones, well, if you can <laughs> loosely use that term, were in a shed and then the others were out in the woods and they pulled them out. 1966 or 67 Fairlane. 
Looks like 67 parts that are in it. It is a stick car. Those pedals are probably 400 bucks on eBay or five. Rusty rockers. It's kind of a baffling thing on these Fords, the rockers, even though they galvanize them, seems like they just get totally gone. And then the stuff they didn't galvanize is fine. This one, I think, could have been somebody's race car project at some point because it's got the little funky push bar on the front. Z bar still in it. It was actually a three on the tree because you got the shift rods there on the column. Probably a parts car at this point. Floors are gone, quarters mangled. I believe you can buy quarters for those cars. And then the little Volkswagen Beetle. There's a sunroof model. Catalog term was the sunroof. But that's a little bigger than what we consider a sunroof here in the U.S. So in the U.S. we kind of colloquially term them the rag top. This old little bugger is kind of rusty, even though it was parked inside. A couple relics of the 70s on the dash here, the little foam feet and the fastened seat belt from the AAA. Pretty desirable colors on this. Got the little Valvoline oil change sticker on there. Focus. Lincoln, Nebraska. Buildable car. Your VW guys just expect that they're going to be fixing rust. So, grab a little look under the hood here. Molested car. At least it hadn't been wrecked in the front. I see so many of these that the fronts are all banged up on it. Looks like it could have been. Don't know if that's gray or this is maybe, I don't know. What got going on with, that. with that factory primer. What was the gray color again? I'm not a bug expert. Nobody home there. 66 on the tail lamp. It's got the Pope's nose. They call that tag lamp. A lot of relics and old timers out here. So, 60. Three Dodge pickup. This is a half ton step side and Not sure if that's a long bed Probably could be I'm not an expert on Dodge wheelbases either 50 Five Ford 56, I guess. Come down this row a little later. The Dodge, I believe, is a 33. And this thing had the wood spoke rims. And what else can we say? Six cylinder. Pretty nicely preserved grill on there. Don't know an exact model on this. There's like a bunch of D's with letters behind them, like DB, DC, stuff like that. Quite a few parts for it in there. And there's the Art Deco speedometer. 
Looks like they sawed the windshield pillars. Strictly a parts car, but if he had an old coupe he needed to piece together, it'd be a good parts buggy for that. So, I'm gonna stay on track here and go down row number one. And I believe this is sale order. So we've got the 63 or 4 Ford truck, short box. This is after they quit building the unibody. That thing is totally gone. A lot of rust. I see a parts truck, but somebody may have enough ambition to take two and make one. 56 Pontiac, Ford or Hardtop. Again, super rough car. Old graveyard like this, they just kind of laid where they fell. like somebody tried to cut the quarters open to get the tail lights. Then got the 39 or 40 Chevrolet truck. This stuff's had a hard, hard life. I would guess by the paint this one was indoors. With the interesting little red jewel Necker's knob. That's kind of an odd. Interesting, like old military button that somebody took apart and put on that truck. 65 or 66 Cadillac. Those are hard for me to tell apart both those years. Somebody was asking the other day about a pillared hardtop. This is a pillared hardtop. So you've got a conventional hardtop door See, there's no frame, it just has the glass, but the body shell itself has a pillar. And when you open that door, with the glass rolled down, it's just the door like a hardtop door, yet there's still the pillar in the middle. 58 Ford, Fairlane four-door post. They actually built these 57 and 58 Fords in two wheelbases. That's the short one. I believe most of the extra length was in the quarter panel. 57 Ford. You can see the differences in the two body styles. A lot of 57 and 8 is shared, but they actually did change. You can see the roof there that separate little rear quarter window is actually in the body on the 57 and then the 58 they moved it to the door really attractive colors on that 57 66 Impala four door hard top they can't all be 67's unfortunately People might, you know, look at a horde of cars like this out in the woods and say it's a waste, but the other way to look at it is there's other places that this stuff just gets wiped clean when they're still, you know, old, used, late model cars that just go away. But at least, 
you know, nobody's going to disagree. This was a terrible way to take care of them. But on the other hand, they were just old cars, you know, any other situation and circumstance, they would have just been scrapped as late models. Nobody would have given a thought, but at least, you know, by them still existing, not being crushed when they were 10, 15, 20 year old cars, at least they still do exist and they're still available now as 60, 70, 80 year old cars to collectors for the parts. Even though they're just parts cars, probably most of them. 61 Ford Starliner two door hardtop. This is a body that was begun in 60 and then carried through 64 on the very, very basic bare bones of it, but most of that 60 through 62 that kind of held as far as like your dash and your chassis, but a lot of sheet metal changes. About every year they really revised them quite a lot, which was common back then. Starliner would have had little star medallions there on that sea post, which are gone. This was the competitor to GM's 61 Impala bubble top. Kind of a cool little George Jetson mirror there. 1952 Chevrolet. This has that typical Korea chrome, which is actually just a zinc with the varnish over it. Not actual chromium with a nickel or copper underneath of it. That grill's actually holding up super, super good for Korea chrome. Usually you see them just all either total surface rust or green. 58 Ford wagon. This thing is pretty hammered, but still if somebody's building a wagon, a lot of good parts there. These old 50s Fords actually said power steering on the horn ring. If they had it, which this one doesn't. This is 61 Ford two-door post. See the difference between it and the hard top body. Two-door post, just kind of a unique body style. A lot of drag racer guys like these because they had a stiffer, sturdier integrity to them. I think in 61 you could get 406. So if you wanted to have a car to go fast, this might have been it. Although conservative farming country, this one probably has a Y block V8 or an inline six. One really neat feature of these 61 Fords is this integrated door handle in the body trim. Really neat detail. 47 Chevrolet Coupe. Identical to 48, except 48's had the big T-bar that they added to the grill. Olds F85, I think 61. That thing's got kind of a cool George Jetson dash cluster in it too. Chevrolet should be 1930. This one was obviously in the barn. Pretty neat car. Now this one actually probably will be fixed up. Not gonna say restored because 
most of the guys looking at something like this probably would be hot rodders. You can see the wood structure of the body, and that's kind of been rotted away from the ears. But the fact that it's not totally falling apart means it still has chances for resurrection and revival. You see all that structural wood. 31s. There's structural wood in the cowl, which makes it a little more of a challenge. Not sure when they got away from the wood in the cowl, but 35 and 36 were still wood cars with steel cowl, so they're a little bit easier to work on as far as the body is concerned. Thing's got an updraft carburetor on it. Cute little air filter. Nineteen fifty nine Ford two door hardtop Galaxy. Black desirable combination. The black with the I think this is red interior. No, oh, it's all black. Okay. Totally black car, body interior. This, too bad it's not a 59 Impala because if it were, somebody would go to the effort to restore it, but 59 Fords are just not the market that a Chevrolet has. I like them all, Ford, Chevrolets, Plymouth, Mopar, GM. I actually had a 59 Ford. Dad and I bought out of the junkyard when I was 13. 55 Chevy, four door. I don't know, some of these, they kind of brutalized them getting them out of the trees. But if they're parts cars anyway, probably doesn't matter a huge amount unless it's the parts you wanted. Now on the roof's been crushed by a tree. 41 Chevrolet. Always have a soft spot for these because my dad's first car was a 41. He sold it in Virginia before he moved to Kansas in 77. See, an old timer did a little bit of body work with the torch there. Standard interior, just the plain horn button, clock delete. Forty one had the bubble shaped lower doors. Forty would have had running boards. And then forty one they integrated the headlights into the fenders. Your forty had headlight pods, kind of similar to the forty one through six trucks. A lot of people think that forty and forty one Chevrolet cars look identical but the headlights and the running boards are kind of the easy giveaway features. 62 Ford, two-door hardtop. Somebody had this body off the frame. Just a failed abandoned restoration project. Kind of a cool fuzzy 70s dash. It has a stick car, $400 set of clutch pedals in it. Figure these cars probably were put in the woods, 70s, 80s, so they've laid here 40, 50 years.
56 Ford, four-door post, black and white. That one's got the Thunderbird Special V8 in it. Power steering, manual brakes, the Ford cars with the Y block had dual exhaust, and then the Ford trucks had the crossover. Y block was overhead valve, but the rest of it was pretty low tech. Still had the oil pump on the side of the block with external passage tubes. Last year the Y block was 62. It came out in 54. That was a cool looking car with those white walls. All right here, 1938, I believe, Buick. Front grill of that car took a whack back in the day. Well, the whole thing did. <laughs> Parked in 56. So last year that Buick was driven was when that Ford was brand new. Got the green moss on the running boards. Kind of a neat banjo steering wheel. Art Deco dash and speaker grill and your clock in the glove box door. 38 is all steel. Last year for structural body wood on GM cars was 36. And they held on the longest of any manufacturer because General Motors had a deal where they wanted to buy up all their suppliers like Delco and Remy. We just think of GM components, but they used to be separate companies. And so along those lines, GM actually bought a whole forest in Georgia in the 20s, and they kept structural wood in the cars, like that 31 Cube, until that forest was depleted, which about 36 was the time. This one should be a 52. That's a really common color combo for 52 Chevys. You see a lot of them that are light green with a dark green top. Pretty rough stuff, but again, they held on and now they're here for parts. Parts is better than nothing. Parts is better than being a toaster decades ago. 49 Ford has the bubble bumper guards, the little skinny park lights, and the refrigerator style door handles. That's a two door sedan. They also built a two door coupe with a short greenhouse on the roof. 1946 Ford, two-door sedan. It's got Hastings marked on the door. Makes you wonder if that was an old city car, city police car or something. Nineteen forty two Chevrolet. Kind of an oddball. February ten, I believe, was the last day of nineteen forty two production. This one has the chrome, so it was probably built in the end of forty one, would be my guess. Nineteen forty two cars. There's a lot of NOS stuff available still because when they do the runs on the assembly lines, 
where they made the parts, they would actually do a run of all the replacement parts first, ship them to dealers, and then build the cars. So with the half year of the cars, there really weren't a lot of cases where those parts got used. They just kind of sat around. I think people were pretty careful with cars during the war because they knew they wouldn't get new cars for several years. So if you're storing a 42 anything, it's pretty rare to start with, but depending on the parts, you'll probably have good access to some of it anyway. Some's probably getting unobtainable, depending what it is. Another Cadillac. They built several different body styles of these Cadillacs. This is probably like a Fleetwood. It's got the pillared hardtop, but it has the extra vent window in that back door. I'm sure these are all stuck shut from sitting. Well, not that one. There you can see that pillar with the seal. That's part of the body. Pillared hard top Cadillac. That one had a vinyl top, which was starting to come in the mid 60s. 74 or 5 Dart. This has the small bolt pattern, so it would be drum brake. Slant 6. A lot of these old Mopars, that K member where the strut rods go, actually not the K-member, but the rear body brace, where the rear of the torsion bars mount, it'll rust out and it'll drop and they'll twist back straight and unload and then they sit down. So it's essentially the same as a control arm rusting through on a regular car and a coil spring popping through it. My granddad had one of these. I have good memories of it. We took it to South Dakota every summer. And I'd always forget and wear shorts and burn my legs on the vinyl. Good times. 1951 Chevrolet. I built a model kit of one of these as a kid. So that was one of the first years of Chevrolet I could identify as a 51. The three horizontal grill bars. Just like the plastic version. 68 Bonneville. Guarantee that engine's probably seized. But I'm going to put a bar on it just to satisfy my curiosity. Probably a 400, which would be the correct engine for the GTO, but I have not done a Pontiac historical service write-up on it, report, so I don't know exactly which coded one it would be. I need to do that because then it would help when I'm out at these places and see 68 Pontiacs, you know if it's the correct 400 or not. Verdoro green, same color as my GTO. 53 Chevrolet. This is a two-door sedan. They also built the coupes with the short roof, short quarter window. 210, your Bel Air would have had two quarter moldings with a little Bel Air badge in between them. And then your 150 was really cheap. It had no windshield stainless or anything. It was black rubber gaskets. So if you ever see a 53 150 that's painted black, it kind of has an all blacked out look to it, which is pretty neat, I think. Then this 
little piece on here is the factory visor mount. Your 52 and older cars had the divided windshield, so when they engineered that visor, they needed more than just the drip rail mounting points, so they made that little piece, which is actually chrome-plated pot metal. Put that on there. Then another 47 Chevrolet two-door. Really, really nice grill in there. That grill's probably seven, eight hundred bucks. One little ding above a park light, but other than that, pretty good. That's a probably a restorable car. Got good original paint on it that protected the body from rotting completely out. Another Chevrolet, this is 29 or 30. Somebody stole the radiator badge off of it fresh. Oh well. Two door sedan. You can see the early wood body construction. This whole top piece is actually separate. There was all wood structure in there. You can see the nail holes where they put it together. Old wood body cars have to be really rare, desirable, and valuable to justify doing all that work because they're super labor intensive and most people don't commit that far and deep to a project. So this one's strictly, strictly parts car. 63 Galaxy four-door post Galaxy 500 this is probably the most common body style of 63 Fords most of them you see are Galaxy 500 four-door posts they did build a hard top and they did build a plain Galaxy with just single side molding but this is pretty common. Hard tops and plain galaxies pretty rare. 64 Mercury, 63. I always have a hard time telling. Yeah, 64 had the headlight brow that went all the way over the grill. <laughs> yeah. Replates are expensive now. The EPA's ruined, ruined the plating market. Used to be 400 bucks. Now double that. Yep. Yeah. That was a really interesting car. Two-door hard top with a breezeway. So this car, wow, well, only driven for six years, and then they quit. Wish I could get the store open. There we go. Show the inside. These have kind of a cool aircraft theme to the gauges. That's a clutch pedal car as well. Ashtray is full, that's why they parked it. You see that breezeway glass. Gives that roof a bit of a Sydney Opera House look to it. I think that front bumper is super nice in my opinion. I'd be proud of it on a car. Another factory black. Fomoco, two in a row, 63 factory black. Ford got whacked in the front. Accordion the frame pounded it in. It's like all the 
license plates. Maybe they want to sell them at the sale. Who knows? I think the owners would want to have them for telling the history of their cars. Once it's in a box, it's just any old license plate, but their stuff to sell how they want. This Ford's a long bed. Really hard life. Wow, look at that, no floor at all. 65 custom cab. Still had that plain style dash. And then 66, they did kind of more of a stylized plastic dash with little hooded gauges in it. That was a pretty neat truck when it was new. Desirable colors with all the chrome trim on it. Cheap ones had painted bumpers. 58 four door post. They made a 58 four door hardtop and it's just almost identical. Like the only difference in the hardtop is that little extra chrome at the back of the door. So if you bought a hard top, you didn't get a huge amount of difference till you rolled the windows down. The little Bel Air badge in 58, it was really expensive to tool for because you had this chrome and then you had that aluminum piece separate that's riveted on there. And so they carried that badge over to 59. So 58 and 59 Chevys are pretty well completely different stylistically, but they did share the badging, at least on Bel Airs. This is kind of cool. Norfolk, Northrop. Some Cadillacs and Chevrolets. Kind of got that dusty rose color. I think that's a that's it is a metallic it's just metallic lacquer it's faded out it looks like a solid color but it's actually lacquer there yeah, back to the end of this row so we'll start over this old fort just got hammered tree dropped on it there it is. So 56 had the little individual, kind of a sportier look to it. 55 had the gauge cluster with the little plexiglass hood that kind of looked like a Chrysler Astrodome. Ford had that gauge cluster in 54, 55, and then Chrysler had it in like 60, 61. A little bit of a leap. 56, I believe they called that the club sedan or club coupe, I'm not sure. 40 Ford. Somebody's added a 50 Plymouth bumper. They had to trim it quite a bit. Trimmed in the center and trimmed on the ends. That badge, I want to say somebody said that badge makes it a 41 because they had kept these extra year. I think 40 and 41 is the two years of them, and I think the badge makes it 41, somebody said. 64 Galaxy. This is a really rare car, two-door post. Doors are stuck, tree fell on it. Got whacked in the back. Thing had a hard life. These 64 bumpers are super hard to find because they have a pocket in there that rots them. Somebody 15 years ago had been reproducing them and then I'm not sure what happened.
It's a shame it's hit because it's a really original car. Automatic, 79,000 miles. Forty-six Chevrolet. You can see that plain grill that they put in them. Fleet Master. I believe it was kind of a cheap model. Little Wow, this old Hudson tree totally destroyed it. Not that man hadn't done his part before, but the tree kind of finished it. A lot of these old cars back in the day, you know, we think of them as collector's items now, but the kids... I mean, this thing, you would have sold it to a junkyard for $10, $15. And these old farm kids, you could have way more than $10 worth of fun if the thing still ran. Take it out in a field, and they'd jump them. They'd drive them at night. Some of them they'd cut the roofs off of, and the kids would go coyote hunting with them. And then whenever the old car quit running, they would basically just pound it to death where it sat and leave it. Kind of sad, but, you know, kids today would do it with little front wheel drives and probably not think twice. Will they ever be as collectible as a Hudson Coupe? That remains to be debated. There's a 64 Ford. That's the four door hard top. Kind of a neat body. They actually did make 500 XL four door hard tops. With the buckets and fancy back seat and everything. This is a plain Galaxy 500. 60 Starliner. This thing got totally pounded in the front. Just wonder what the story was. Most of the time, guys are either drunk or asleep. Kind of tends to be how it goes. Another 40 or 41 pickup. Ah, the corrosion on these is just really something. That one could have laid on its side before they brought it here. For some reason, cars of this era, 30s and 40s, used to see a lot of them when they'd dump them, they'd get turned on their sides. I think maybe people wanted transmission or something out of the bottom. They just pull it up on the side and leave it. And they sit there several decades and one side rots off. And I've heard of guys taking really rare stuff like 32, 34 coupes and like old willies and things like that. And they'll like actually literally find two different ones turned on their sides and cut them, build a car out of two. If it's valuable enough and somebody's dedicated enough, they'll do it. 67 Impala. Unfortunately, a four-door post, but still got some desirable pieces on it. Hood's rotted out. The frames on these cars, generally they'll start 
right under that transmission cross member. This one's had a head start because it's rusted all the way up to the front of the car. 65 and 6 were pretty bad about rusting. 7s and 8s in the drier parts of the country, they're still pretty easy to find with a good frame. The old Buick was a tree victim. 77, 78, 79. The vinyl top kind of ate the roof too. Park Avenue, Electra Limited. Good tilt column in it. Another 49 Ford. Four door. Very sensational car when they brought them out. They sold a lot of these. 61 Plymouth. I always think of Leave It to Beaver every time I see these old 57 to 62 era Mopars. Headlight rings are really expensive if you can find good ones, and there you can see why. There was a Belvedere, which was the top. No, Fury was the top. I don't know if they've made a four-door Fury yet in 61. So, 61 four-door Belvedere might have been the top trim. Old Plymouth Cambridge. This thing's pretty tough, too. Any of these old cars that they had like either yellow and green or yellow and blue. Those colors just patina down so nice. This one's got too much hard patina. Need to check if this has overdrive or not. I don't think so. Looks like just a regular three speed parking brake handle. Those handles always trick you because you gotta look and see if it says overdrive right on it or not. Little Studebaker Lark. This is 60, 61. Kind of cute on one hand, but kind of dumpy looking on the other. I think all these manufacturers that built little compact cars under their regular line, I think they tried to make them not like super, super great, just so that you maybe would have the ambition to trade up for something a little more attractive. Kind of a armchair theory after the fact. You can feel free to tell me I'm right or wrong. This little Rambler wagon. I have never seen vehicles rust the way I've seen Ramblers rust. Like this thing, the whole cowls come apart. You see the whole back's rotted out of it. People are like, how come you're not an AMC guy? I'm like, I just haven't <laughs> found a good one. <laughs> like, I guess you could be an AMC guy if you wanted to go to the desert and get a good one.
Gamble's Varcon battery. That thing probably ran and drove and they just shut it off and pulled it out in the woods because they thought the suspension was going to give out and it probably was. 56 Mercury? Yes, 56. It's kind of a cool car. Pretty different from a 56 Ford. The whole chassis, whole body, the interior. These have a five inch bolt circle. Fords are four and a half. So maybe a Y block engine and some headlight bulbs. Be about about what's interchangeable with a 56 Ford. This 59 Chevy, I mean, it's a decent looking car, at least for parts. I don't think somebody would go all the way to restore a four-door post that sat this long. But you see what the 59 convertibles are bringing. And even if you needed a front clip and moldings and pieces, this one would be pretty good to buy for parts. It's really not that rusty, not that bad compared to what's here. Sat in the trees a long, long time. Yeah, that trunk floor is not even bad. Tree grew under the corridor. By the time you nickel and dime all that little stuff, it's not probably justifiable to restore a car like this, but if somebody was over the moon about it and really wanted to, I wouldn't stop them. This Ford is 52 or 3. Should be a 52 with those little 3 bar park lights. And that's got the original assembly line headlight bulb. That's super cool. This is a 8BA flathead. They built this body style 52, 53, 54. Changed the grills every year and the side moldings. 54, they changed up mechanically because it had the Y block. This is actually a Fordomatic car, which is probably a little obscure. 51 was the first year of the two door hardtop, and it had the three piece rear glass. So they carried that stylistic look into 52. And there's a whole nother three rows of cars, trucks, yet to see, as well as this whole row of trucks. I try and keep these videos under an hour and that's about the point we're at. So I'm gonna shut this one down and Say thanks for watching Mr. Good Pliers and tune in on the next one and we'll catch another run of these vehicles.